Good afternoon to everybody. My name is Cesar Díaz, and I am the CEO of Sabaté, a family business founded in Barcelona in 1940. And I will explain you how can a company survive 75 years in a very competitive environment. We began as an analog photo lab reproducing posters from Glass Originals sent to us from US best cinematographic companies such as Metro Goldwyn Mayer, Fox or Paramount. In its origins, working conditions were luxurious. At that time, there were no competitors and this allowed the company have shifts, shifts and ballers for all the staff. In the 60s, we were mounting posters for the most important exhibitions that took place in Barcelona. We began to produce point of purchase graphics for fashion retail companies such as, as Zara. During the 60s, business competition appeared with other local companies. This was a good time. There were a lot of orders and no price tensions between us. In the 90s, the digital era began. We were one of the first companies to invest in digitalization. We moved from processing film to digitally retouching and laser printing images. This investment also changed the way we worked. We moved from being artisans to mass producers. However, with a small investment and without the need for highly skilled staff, any small printer could start and compete with established companies. This was the origins of the price war. Against this highly competitive background, we found an alternative model to go forward. We work on high quality demands such as museums and artistic reproductions. Up until the early knots, we could only print onto photographic media, mainly paper and backlight, and mount the image onto just a few rigid substrates. Being pioneers in the introduction of the first UV machines, at that time, allowed us to maintain margins and begin to open up to new markets, including food, fashion, and cosmetic brands. We started to print onto wood, acrylic, aluminum, glass, and self-adhesive. So, we were able to offer our customers the best printing quality that the technology allowed with innovative finishings. The idea of print everything, where we offer solutions to personalize an environment, started here. With the recent economic boom up to 2008, Spain was saturated with printing machines. But when the bubble burst, machinery production slowed. So the print sector was forced to cut prices to avoid closing. Orders from public investment for museums and artistic reproductions stopped. So we were forced to find new business opportunities to replace this volume. Now the age of shifts and ballers had gone. Today we have recovered and increased our volume producing global point of purchase graphic campaigns for retail. Sounds good, but a new problem appeared. Margins, low margins. We were just breaking even. How did we solve this problem? in three ways. One, we avoided printing onto common surfaces like PVC, foam and banner, which was saturated in the marketplace. We returned to our beginnings by printing photo quality images onto environmentally green print substrates, textiles, FC papers, corrugated bipanel, bamboo. Two, we became certified producers and testers of the most important brands of our sector. For example, Sabaté is now 3M certified manufacturer, Hanemule certified studio, Reboard official converter, and we were the new HP Latex Worldwide beta tester. Three, we introduced design as one of the most important services of the company. We expanded from being a print-only service provider to becoming a print agency. Now we are converting two-dimensional prints onto 3D elements such as chairs, table, curtains or lamps. 
In addition, we are offering through digital printing the option for the client of personalizing any kind of space, a wall, a floor, a bar, an office, the lobby of a hotel. As I have said, design has become crucial to our business. So now let me introduce you to our design partner, Felipe, who will speak to you about the impact of printing in design. So um, good afternoon. As uh, Cesar said, um, we are currently and uh, now for forever a period of um, of years been collaborating with Sabate as um, as designers. Um, we started our collaboration uh, doing the corporative space of Sabate in an interior design fair back in 2012. Um, our studio uh, was founded by Daniel and me. That in the background uh, is Daniel, and on his side, uh, that's my big head, probably as big as the real one. Um, that's uh, not a photographic version of us, but also an interpretation of ourselves. Um, we are, as designers, um, like to relate closely to clients. Cesar is one of our, our clients. And uh, we like to help them write their business stories. And uh, we like to use for that all that we have in our bags and in this case, in our big heads. Um, hoping these stories will become uh, successful stories, success stories, and hoping also these stories become real. But when it comes to choosing the materials we employ to develop these interior schemes, we don't care so much about the reality of those materials, about the truthness, about the honesty of those materials. We reckon we should and we can fake those materials. And in this presentation, I'm gonna try to tell you why we think that, why we think faking it is actually the, the, the way to go, the, 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 the right strategy to uh, differentiate yourself from your competitors. As we will see, uh, within some contexts, reality is not all that relevant, it's not that important. Do you guys really mind that um, Pamela's breasts are not real? I don't know you guys, but I, I certainly do not mind that. Do you think people mind this not being the real thing? Or probably they are buying this precisely so, precisely because they perform better, they are easier to maintain, and they are more convenient than their real counterparts. The same, the same happens within the interior design field. Uh, but to, lead, to be less prosaic, let's say we think of retail spaces and public spaces as bubbles. Uh, we think those spaces need to be um, side-engaging moments that convey a message uh, while they last, until they pop. And, and, but as attractive as the side of a, a bubble may be to most, no one expects the bubble to last forever or to be made of crystal or to feed, to be able to feed one of us inside of it. Therefore, we need to make the bubble out of something else than soap. All right? We need to fake it. And we need to make sure this bubble also pops. We need to make sure it pops because, mainly because of trends. We are designers of public spaces and we need to deal with the ever-changing taste of, uh, of the public. It's no secret to anyone that uh, a different trend in music, in fashion, uh, comes up every four, six months. In music industry, this happens every year, every two years. In the interior design field, this hap used to happen every decade, but the pressure, the um, of, of, of renewal pressure, 
under the interior design has becoming uh, has become the pace has fastened in the last years so we are not on a on a fashion paced cycle but we are getting close to that so basically the challenge we are facing as as, as de uh, space designers right now is to uh, make a, an environment that uh, lasts a bit longer than soap but that costs like paper, that it's easy to apply like paint, and that it's very, very, very lightweight. So that's why we are thinking about printing all the time nowadays when it comes to designing retail spaces. These are some examples, not, not from our agency, but these are some examples of how printing has influenced and affected the way we think of retail spaces nowadays, all right? Um, we are talking about imitation. Imitation of uh, like our jackets here, we're trying to imitate a wooden texture, all right? But not about the type of imitation that became so popular within the 70s, uh, during the 70s and the 80s. Uh, different type of imitation that it involves interpretation, that involves creativity that uh, gives it a twist, a spin, all right? We like to think of uh, this type of imitation not merely as a simulation, but as a, a stimulation of those materials. We are trying to portray a certain feature of that material and uh, generate impact. This project over here uh, was a project done last year for a printing, a large format printing company in Madrid, uh, also for an interior design fair. And the, um, the commission was to cover the facade of the building. It was a recognized, uh, acknowledged, uh, brutalistic architecture building. So we were tempted to cover the whole facade. Uh, as it's very common nowadays in, in Spain, budget was, was very tight. And um, we couldn't cover the whole thing. So we said, let's cover just the windows, or let's cover just the, 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 the blank slabs of the, of the facade. And, um, and, and then let's multiplicate, let's uh, make, open up more windows. Uh, but then we said, why should we replicate the, wind, the existing windows if we have so many nice windows in, in Madrid? And, um, so that, that, that building became the architectural digest of the city. And in the interior, we set up a gallery where we, sh we, we brought to a, to a closer scale, br brought closer to the eye what had been reproduced in large format on the facade. Uh, in this alley, uh, which we thought it could be like a gallery, what we wanted to do was to... Um, to make again a graphic printed interior design scheme where the printed outgrew the, the framing and uh, actually tainted all the walls, uh, covered the floors. We made printed um, metallic like joinery and uh, exposed brick all made of ink. This is the look of the facade at night time. This is another project, uh, also for the same fair at a different year. We were commissioned by the, the fair organization to do the public restrooms, uh, also on a tight budget. We didn't want to add any uh, more noise to the, all the stylistic proposals that were already set up in that uh, very tiny space. So we wanted to create a, a very mute, minimalistic oasis. Uh, very zen-like, uh, so we were inspired by the Japanese uh, culture and facade. We wanted to translate into the graphic language of tiling uh, a very iconographic uh, prints, uh, Japanese prints such as the Kaganagua wave and the koi fish. Uh, so this was all vinyl, uh, but that looked like uh, tiling. And uh, it was all set up in a, in a very uh, sound-like space. This is the, 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 the space we designed for Sabaté two years ago. And it was quite successful. 
there we printed everything, which was, which is, still is, and is going on strong. The leitmotif and the motto of, of Sabatez company, print everything, print it large, print it big, and don't be afraid of it, all right? Here, everything was printed, flooring, wooden flooring, linoleum flooring, the whole counter was done in reboard, um, printed reboard, the ceiling, pendant ceilings, uh, the shelving units, wallpaper. We had 3D printing, and we wanted we wanted um, to give it a theme. Uh, so we went for the Monopoly strategy game, where each of the boxes in the board game was supposed to be one of these materials where Sabaté is able to print, uh, and that counter was where you were to supposed to collect the chip and the chip and dies. So uh, it was quite, of a, quite a fun space, but it didn't resemble exactly the Monopoly game. We wanted, we wanted to go for a, for a bit of a uh, steampunk uh, style with, our, with all that vintage lettering, because uh, we, again, we wanted to give it a spin, all right? So these are more images of the, of the space. Um, this was a very, very media, uh, media success. And we have, uh, certainly for our studio, was uh, something that, uh, that kept clients calling and knocking at our door. And uh, we, with Sabate, have developed from that moment on a very close relationship, and we are constantly co collaborating. It has also opened up our business to uh, the world of printers, and that's why we are here. Uh, so, in short, we think uh, the printing industry, it's, it's always evolving, and, and it will continue to do so, very much so like the small format printing did, from the Altamira Caves to the frescoes, the Renaissance frescoes. It's going slowly to evolve to the screen-supported, to the LED, all right? So is it ink going to be extinct? That, that the, the question remains. And according to what we know and to what our experience has been, ink will indeed be extinct soon. But printers will not. Printers will continue to do what you have been doing all along, which is delivering messages to the audiences. But instead of doing it with ink, you'll be doing it with beams of the brightest light. So that's our message to you guys. And uh, we are just happy to be here and uh, open to any suggestions, comments, and collaborations. If you have any questions, you'll st feel free to ask. And uh, here's Cesar again to answer your more technical and uh, field-related questions that may arise. Thank you very much.